Hello! In this video, we'll discuss the Dalton's Atomic Theory. Well, before I come to the Dalton's Atomic Theory, let's just study or learn about the story of the discovery of atom. The idea of atom was originally a philosophy. It is said that about 2600 years ago, uh, a sage in India, sage Canada, he proposed the term or he coined the term Anu or Parmanu, Param Anu, that is the smallest an or the kan or the smallest piece or the smallest particle. And he said that it is these Anu or the Parmanu with which the entire matter or the universe is made up of. Well, at the same time, uh, correspondingly, there was a scientist called Democritus in Greece who also proposed a similar idea and he coined the term atomos and this was in about 460 to 370 BC which is approximately the same time as Sage Canada but since the communication between the East and the West wasn't much at that time Sage Canada always remained uh, unknown while Democritus he got the credit for coining the term or giving the idea or philosophy of an atom what did he say? What was it that brought him to the idea of an atom? According to him, he said that if you take any, if you take matter and you cut it into halves and you go on cutting it, let's take the example of this paper. I cut it into half. I cut this into half. And then I cut it further into half. And I cut this particle further into a half. And this small part of piece that I'm left with, I now cut this to half and I further cut it to half and I further cut it to half and half and I go on cutting it I'm sure there'll be a stage where it would not be possible for me to cut it further into a half do you see this it's very difficult to cut it there will be a point when it would be impossible to cut this into a smaller particle so whatever the smallest particle is the philosophy was that was called the atom all right and that term was coined by democritus now after the laws of uh, chemical combination were proposed dalton gave the law of multiple proportions and we know the other laws were the law of constant composition the law of um, what uh, conservation of mass and the law of multiple proportions all these laws they were Dalton thought about them and then he proposed on the basis of those and on the concept of atom, he gave his atomic theory. What was Dalton's atomic theory? These are the statements. The first statement is that matter consists of indivisible atoms. He said that matter, as I showed you in the example of cutting the paper, it consists of very, very small particles and they are so small that they are indivisible. The second point was that all the atoms of a given element have identical properties, including mass. Now, all atoms of a given substance have identical properties, including mass. If you take atoms of one element, they should all be identical. And if you take atoms of another element, they should also be identical to each other. And then he said that atoms of different elements, they differ in masses. So according to him, the difference between atoms of different elements was a difference in their masses. The third point was that compounds are formed when atoms of different elements combine in a fixed ratio. Fixed ratio, the law of constant com composition or constant proportions. This is what uh, you can derive this from that that compounds are formed when atoms of different elements they combine in a fixed ratio that was known as the law of constant composition so you can explain this the law from this particular uh, point in the theory that they have a fixed ratio chemical reactions involve a reorganization of atoms these are neither created nor destroyed in chemical reactions Chemical reactions just involve the reorganization. When a chemical reaction takes place, for example, 
the reaction between oxygen molecules and hydrogen molecules took place to produce water so the oxygen if you took uh, carried out the experiment in a closed container the mass in the beginning and in the end would be the same with but the properties of uh, oxygen and hydrogen are entirely different from the properties of water hydrogen is a combustible substance oxygen is a supporter of combustion while water is a uh, is used as a fire extinguisher so what happened was the matter changed a chemical reaction took place but the atoms only rearranged themselves they were neither created nor destroyed which is nothing but the law of what is the first law the law of conservation of mass that matter can neither be created nor be destroyed it only changes form in chemical reactions so we find that dalton's atomic theory could be used to explain the different laws of chemical combination but remember the dalton's atomic at the time he gave it in 1808 at that time the idea of knowledge about atoms was very very less and it was only the beginning of our uh, studies and it was more at the philosophical stage and that's why it's not called the law it's called the theory what were the drawbacks in this theory if you really see every point had some drawbacks he said matter consists of indivisible atoms atoms cannot be divided today we know it's not true atoms are made up of electrons protons neutrons and many other subatomic particles and they therefore it is it can be uh, divided in nuclear reactions an atom can actually be crushed and broken into uh, smaller parts so matter consists it can be divided and it consists of electrons protons and neutrons mainly and other subatomic particles like neutrinos and all are also positrons are also there all the atoms of a given element have identical properties including mass today we know that atoms of the same element can contain different masses because the identity of an element is not the mass of the element the identity of the element is the atomic number today we know that there is a nucleus and the nucleus consists of the protons and neutrons and it is the sum of these two which tells us which becomes the mass but it is the number of protons which tells you which element it is so we know that such elements which are atoms of the same element which have the same atomic number but different mass numbers are known as isotopes now for example carbon has two isotopes carbon 12 and carbon 14 carbon 12 has six protons and six neutrons and hence its mass is 12 while carbon 14 has six protons but eight neutrons and hence its mass is 14 hydrogen on the other hand has three isotopes hydrogen 1 hydrogen 2 and hydrogen 3 all of them have the same number of protons that is one but they have 0 1 and 2 neutrons due to which their masses are different on the other hand he said that atoms of different elements differ in mass this also wasn't true because the mass of an atom is the sum of neutrons and protons and if the sum is the same even if the elements are different they would have the same mass number such elements were known as or such examples were known as isobars for example sulfur has 16 protons and ha can have one of the isotopes of sulfur can have a mass of 40 chlorine can also have one of the isotopes of chlorine can also have a mass of 40 argon has a mass of 40 potassium can be 40 calcium is 40 so what are the how how are all of these isotopes of different elements how are they isobars because all of them have a mass of 40 all and why are they different elements because each one has different number of protons and it is the protons which are the identity of an element so we see that sulfur chlorine argon potassium calcium are all isobars similarly hydrogen and helium three both of them have one and two number of protons different elements but three and three mass numbers because they have two neutrons and one neutron which makes them have the same mass such elements were known as isomers so this was dalton's atomic theory how it can be used to explain the different laws of chemical combination and how this theory was kind of wrong partially wrong and partially correct too thank you for watching 
please do keep coming back for more material on my channel. Bye-bye.